All right, good morning, everyone. Here we're starting a new beautiful week, and God willing, this week will be the one where Mashiach brings the Holy Temple from concealment to revelation, and all the Jews will gather to the land of Israel. All of our enemies will transform to be our friends. <clears throat> this is going to happen in, in the blink of an eye. But meanwhile, we're doing everything we can in order to make it actually happen a little faster, to accept it when it happens. So here we have an example of how we can reset our minds to appreciate and to expect and to even demand the arrival of the Mashiach, who, again, who will build the, the temple and gather all the Jews together in Israel. And first of all, it says he's, he's fighting the battles of, um, of the enemies of Judaism, which our main enemy is ignorance. Our main enemy is the Jews don't know what Jews are. They don't know what Judaism is. They don't know what Torah is. They don't know what the commandments are. And um, so the non-Jews are reminding us because, you know, they hate us. They don't even know why they hate us. They, they don't even have any good reasons nowadays. But the reason they hate us is because we're different. We're, we're what they would like to be. At least that's what it was, you know, the, 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 the Christians and the, the Muslims and the Nazis and all these people and the, the, they, and the, uh, the atheists, you know, they think that they're God. They want to be God. They want to rule the world. They want a world that's ruled by their things, and which is okay, you know, if that's what they want to. The problem is, is that God chose the Jews. What can we do? He chose the Jews. And he chose the Jews that we are going to rule the world, but not the way they want to for their personal gains or whatever. That we're going to rule the world in the sense that we're going to be able to teach the world who they are. Teach the world. We're not going to, that is a brainwash, every, I guess maybe brainwash, soul wash everyone. Wash it to be clean, like washing your glasses. Oh, glass wash, spectacle washing. Wash everybody's glasses so they can see what's really going on in the world, who the how precious they are and how much God loves them and how precious every second is and how precious life is how meaningful it is, and how the Torah is the truth. Oh, that's the point. So the point of Judaism is that when everyone really feels that they're being created by God, they'll be happy. And this will be a happiness, not like some sort of happiness, euphoria or something that you're out of the world, but a happiness that you're just happy to wake up and you're happy to see people and you're happy to work in your job and you're you're happy to help others uh, so one of the main th points of Judaism is happiness. Happiness comes from, basically, from love. That is when something happens that you love, something valuable, something that's good to you, and it's valuable to you, then you feel happy. Right? A person sees his children growing up, happiness. A person has a, a job that he feels meaningful, happiness. He's happy. Happiness ensues from doing meaningful and being who you really are, uh, really are. What, who are we really? We're dynamic. We're changing the world. The world always changes, and we're here to make it better. Okay, so here, here's an example. Now, first of all, why are we talking about this? Because this week's Torah portion that we're learning about is Parshas Kitazria. And it says, a woman, when she gives seed, and she gives birth to a male child, then you circumcise them, etc. But So it's talking about giving seed, giving birth giving birth. Okay, which giving birth in a way is the most, it's the first commandment in Judaism, right? Be fruitful and multiply that one person makes another person. If there's no people, then there's no world. Uh, there's no commandments, there's no anything. So here we go. Again, to stress that in Judaism, this physical world is of utmost, utmost importance. We're going to learn about that in a moment. And it's here is the utmost good and pleasure to be obtained, not from physical things, but from doing the will of the Creator in this world. And so let's go. So it says, Sos tosis v'sagalakara. This is one of the blessings we make uh, in the wedding. In the wedding, under, the, under when, when Jews get married, so there's seven blessings that they make under the wedding canopy. Seven bless, seven blessings, and this is one of them. Sos, sos tosis will be happy and rejoice. The togel. Sos tosis vesogil, will be happy, rejoice, and be, how do you say, uh, 
uh, what's another one? Another one for rejoicing. So be happy, rejoice, and to be um, uh, enthusiastic. Good. Akara, the 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 uh, the barren woman. The kibbutz bonel betocha basimcha. When there is gathered to her her children in joy. <clears throat> So what's this talking about? The simple meaning is that the Jewish people now, in the time of exile, so we are called barren. Barren. A barren woman, she has no womb or she can't give birth to children. It says that in the future redemption, when Mashiach comes, so the barren one, the Jewish people, will be happy when her children are gathered to her. If she's buried barren, how does she have children? So that's why she's happy because she's barren and she can't have any children. And all of a sudden she does have children and having children is the most wonderful thing that could possibly be in the world and that'll make you happy. <laughs> Unlike the woke and these other maniacs say, having children is the most fulfilling thing that can possibly be. Having children, raising them up, of course, I mean, it's a tremendous responsibility. But along with that responsibility comes tremendous satisfaction. So let's. So it says, rejoice, rejoice, and be happy and satisfied, whatever. The barren woman, when she gathers her children <coughs> to her, enjoy. That's one way of translating it. Let's, he may be old. But Mila's tussis, in this world, word tussis, she will be happy. She will be happy. There's two real meanings. In Hebrew, Hebrew grammar and the, the she will be happy is written the same way, same letters as you will make her happy. Masculine. <clears throat> That's the way it goes in Hebrew grammar. I don't know why God, I mean, who, who set up Hebrew grammar? God, God wrote the Torah. And God set up Hebrew grammar like this. So that's why he set it up like that. So it says, <clears throat> we're going to reap one benefit from that. So it says, V'togel, Sus Tussis, be happy, she will be happy, happy, the togel and rejoice, the barren woman when she gathers the children together. Oh, maybe it could be saying that we are speaking to God, and you, we're saying, you, God, Tussis, you should make this barren woman happy. So we'll see, let's go. I, I, I jumped the gun, let's go. There's two meanings to the word v'togel. The one is simple, poel v'omed, she will be happy. Bakai and it means to the Dakara, the barren woman. But Tussis and she will be happy means Nikeva, feminine, that the feminine woman, that the, the feminine woman, the woman, the barren woman will be happy, but Togil and rejoice when she has children. Simple meaning, huh? But there's another explanation also, and that is Poil Yotze. It means <clears throat> to do something, to make something happen. Bakai, this refers to God. We're talking to God. Tus, tus, tus is God, you should make her happy. Shoma, that we're saying to God, the Nochach, second person. Ata, you, God, Tosis Akora, make her happy. You should make her happy. The Tosis, you should make her happy. Tosis means cause her to be happy. The Akora, the barren woman. Let me get my pointer over here. <clears throat> Does it occur? And he explains in grammar what is the key? Nochach lazachar, because second person to masculine is the same thing as feminine third person. Nishtam means third person. So either we're saying that she will be happy or that you, God, should make her happy. Lahavin said, let's understand this. What's going on over here? First of all, what, let's explain about Togiel Akara Bikibuz Bonel, that the barren woman will be happy when she has children. If she's really barren, Shalu Yolanda, they can't, she can't give birth. May I in Lobani, where's she going to have children that she's going to gather them together? <coughs> Excuse me. 
<clears throat> the word akara doesn't mean that she doesn't have children. The word akara means she can't have children. <clears throat> right? So if, if it's just a woman that doesn't have any children, and for whatever reason it is, she just doesn't have it. Sometimes there's women that just, they just don't give birth. <clears throat> And she has children that makes her happy. But here we're talking about a woman that can't give birth. Akara means she cannot give birth. She's an akara. Usually akara means that something is removed. Akar, that she doesn't have a womb or something. So she's akar. So how can she have children? Now the Rebbe is going to explain this according to me and you. Also, what does this got to do with me and you? Right In the future, let's say it's talking about the Jewish people, right? And the Jewish people are going to be happy. So it's going to happen. It's a nice thing that's going to happen, but what does this have to do with me? <clears throat> First of all, I'm not a woman, and I'm not barren, right? I'm not as a. <clears throat> so, what's this got to do with me? So, the Rebbe's going to say, Yes, you are a woman. Everyone is, and everyone is also barren. And this is talking about the Jewish people, and we're going to see what it means. <clears throat> the Indian is like this. Kihine Omer is all the Rebbe. I say, Isha, that's the, the, the first sentence in this week's Torah portion. A woman, when she gives seed and she gives birth to a male, it says a woman, if she gives seed first, then it gives birth to a male. A man, if he gives seed first, then it gives birth to a female. That's what the rabbis say. <clears throat> There's a lot of different explanations about what this is. But one of the explanations is, is that if the woman, the seed arrives, the woman's seed arrives, is, is ready in the womb before the man's seed touches it, <clears throat> then the woman, then the male is dominant then male is dominant. If the woman gives seed first, it gives birth to a, a, a male. And if the man gives birth seed first, <clears throat> if his seed is there before the, the, the egg is there, then the result is a female. So in other words, strangely enough, if the male seed is dominant, <clears throat> if the male seed is dominant, then it gives birth to a a female, and if the female seed is dominant, then it gives birth to a male. Okay. That's what the rabbis say. What does this mean physically? I don't know. To tell you the truth, I really don't know what it means actually, <clears throat> as far as, you know, the human anatomy goes. But that's what the rabbis say. And we're going to see what this means. If, <clears throat> if in the re marital relations, the male seed is dominant, then the result is a, a Woman is a, a, a girl child is born, a female child is born. And if the woman's seed is dominant, then the child will be a male. Okay, what's this got to do with anything? Note it's known. She had been Israel, the Jewish people are called by the name of woman, and God is called by the name of man. Like it says, like it says, on that day, you will be called my tikra I will be called. Is she like your husband, your man? Man. Hine. Kamo Shebe is just like a woman, a man and a woman. If the woman, she gives seed first, so it will give birth to a male. That's what we just finished saying. <clears throat> so it is also with the Jewish people that they're the female, with God, who he's the masculine. If the woman, which is the Jewish people, gives seed first, then the child will be a male. If the, what is this? The woman gives seed first. This is what's called an arousal from below. Milamata lamaila from below to above. <clears throat> okay. There's a book in Judaism which is called the Song of Songs, right? King Solomon wrote it. It's eight chapters long. The Song of Songs. I advise everyone to read it in English. If you understand anything, then you're you're mistaken. <clears throat> you can't understand. Everything in there is an allegory or a metaphor for something else. And what is this something else? The relationship between God and the Jewish people. Now you have to remember the Judaism wants to teach everyone that God is not a, only a spiritual <clears throat> entity. That God is infinitely, infinitely, and intimately close to us, to everyone, not just the Jewish people, to everyone. God is creating everybody. If you are being created by God, which you are, if you're listening to this, then it's a sign that God loves you. You're being created. And God is creating you right now, every single instant, brand new. He's creating the whole rest of the world also. He's also creating that by love. 
but the world can't show us its appreciation. The world is nature, but we can, all human beings. <clears throat> and this relationship is called a man, male and female relationship. God is the male, the world, that's the giver, and the world is the receiver, like Mother Earth. We receive, we, we, we receive everything. God is creating us all the time. Okay. <clears throat> But that's not the end of the thing. The, the end, why does God do it? One of the reasons is so that we, we, will, we will appreciate him. And when we appreciate him, then we'll do what he wants to. Now, this might seem a little bit strange, and it is a little bit strange. And God created the world so that it would, it would be strange. Because it seems to us that the world is real, and the world always was here. Or just isn't important. Here we are. <clears throat> that's the way God created it. But the fact is not so. The fact is this world is an amazing miracle. And before this world was created, we Jews say the world was created 5,784 and a half years ago. Before the world was created, there was nothing. There was no time. There was no being. When God created the world, that's when everything began. That's when time began. That's when spirituality began. Everything began 5,700 years ago. That's when time and it began. Before that, all there was was just the creator there was pure existence, undifferentiated existence. And God, when he created the world, that's when all reality began, as we know it, reality. So, and every second of this world, God is creating, and every second is infinitely, infinitely important. And every second is created, being created by God, and we don't appreciate it at all. And the purpose of the Jewish people is that the world will appreciate this, because that's ultimate reality. And one of the ways to appreciate it is to appreciate the upper worlds a little bit so that you know when you start thinking about the upper worlds, <clears throat> right, like religion, for instance, religion is you start thinking about going to heaven. and So at least you know that you're not alone over here, that there's there's a, 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 some sort of a, of a system <clears throat> that you're being observed, that you're important to something. <clears throat> That's the idea of religion. But a natural, normal feeling of a human being is, is that there's like these French philosophers, there's just, you know, row your boat gently down the stream, life is but a dream, there's no real, just, you know, live for the moment, don't fool yourself, there's nothing more, just this totally meaningless, empty <clears throat> world, and just make the most of it. That's a way to live, you can live that way, could be there's people who live very good that way, but it's not true, the fact is it's not true, and it, it's much more challenging and difficult even sometimes to believe that there is God, and it makes a lot of troubles for you. You can't do what you want. You have to this. And who needs it? <clears throat> right? But the fact is, that's the truth. That's what the Jews bring to the world. Okay. When we appreciate, you appreciate the creator, then there's a feeling of love. Not love. Now, we're going to see there's all sorts of different types of love. There's love, which is powerful love. <clears throat> that's like masculine. Then there's love, which is weak love. You're, you're a receiver. You have to receive, you have to have proofs all the time. That's feminine love. Okay, so the Jewish people, they're chosen by God. We're the, we're the wife of God, and we're chosen to be an example to the whole world that they should appreciate God also. Okay, so let's, we're, they were talking about Jews. <clears throat> the Jewish people with God, when the woman, which is the Jewish people, when they give seed first, namely, what does it mean? When they are the ones that desire God, when their, when their arousal comes from below to above, then it means that they're starting, they're ready. They're ready. They are a receptacle for godliness. They are the ones that, so to speak, <clears throat> arouse God. God answers, like it says, to your, to your husband is your desire, which is called in language, language of Kabbalah, in the name of Halat Man. This is called elevating feminine waters. I learn a little Kabbalah over here. Feminine waters. And afterwards, Nimshach is drawn down. Afterwards is drawn down. After Nimshach is drawn down on arousal from above. God reacts. Now, this is a very basic thing in Hasidic teachings. And there's a lot of, we talked about this before, there's a lot of religious Jews, very genuine, sincere, religious Jews, honest, and they don't believe this. They don't believe this. They believe that God is removed from, really, I mean, genuinely, 100% religious Jews, look, every, every, like, look, you know, they do keep Shabbat, keep all the laws, they're very, very careful, they learn Torah all the time, but they really sincerely 
believe that God is too far away to be affected by what we do. That's what they believe. God does not react to what we do. God acts whenever he wants to. And we just make the vessels and whatever, but that's not what Hasidu teaches and that's not what Kabbalah teaches, at least all, all the Alter Rebbe understands it. God not only does he react, he always reacts. God always reacts to everything we do. Maybe not the way we think, the way we want, maybe not in a way that's visible to us or perceptible to us, but everything we do has an effect on God because the world is very important to God, incredibly important, more important than all the upper worlds. And that's where this love comes from, where we feel how much God will feel how much God loves us. <clears throat> that's the level of masculine. Then the love, if the Jewish people, they're the ones that start, they're the feminine. They start and they desire God. They want to arouse God. And <clears throat> then the resultant love that we feel is masculine, powerful. Bechinas Ahava Rabba, a tremendous love. Shei Bechinas Mili B'Shamayi V'Im Cholol Chavatsti. This, in a way, is the goal, and this will be revealed by Mashiach. What is going to be? You don't want anything for yourself. You don't want to go to heaven. You don't want revelations. All you want is the fact. I am really nothing. God is creating me. I'm an amazing miracle. I, everything I have, my whole being is totally just thankful to God. And you feel that God's unending, what was it, un unconditional love to us. So you say, uh, you know, I don't want anything. I want something for myself. I don't want to be just with you. What does it mean, just with you? That which is with you and close to you, God. Because what it says, that with you is the source of life. Namely, the life force of this world, of the world to come. The pleasures which are in heaven, heavenly pleasures. Which is drawn down to the souls in heaven. Litaneg could get pleasure on God. Machos because of hasagatam, because of their awareness, v'haskalatam, and their understanding, v'hasag of v'haskalas mufla maod, and the amazing, tremendous joy that the souls have in heaven. A pleasure comes from understanding, right? If somebody gives you a check, and the check is for let's say ten million dollars, and you really need the money, let's say let's have everything right. You really need the money. That's the arousal from below. You really need If you don't really need the money, then you're not so happy when you get the, the check. That's called an arousal from above. You get the check first, and I didn't really need it, but okay, you know, well, this is really... But let's say you really needed the money, and you, you get a check for a, a $10 million, right? But you're not really sure if the check is good, and you're not really sure if that's your name on it, and you're not really sure if that bank exists, and et, et cetera. So you, you're not really happy until you understand. You got the check in your hand. Here it is, Right? And you go to the bank and you say, the, 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 this person, does he have the money? Yes, he has the, oh, this is, yes, he's got the money in the bank. What, but is this your signature? I mean, is this, is it made out to you? Um, is it made out to me? I mean, it says over here, I can't read it clearly. Uh, that seems this is my name. You know, what is your name, Bolton? No, it doesn't say, it seems over here that it's saying, Dalton is a D, it's not a B. And so I'm not happy, right? And then is this, this the guy's signature over here? Is this a forgery? Is it not? So you have it right in your hands and the money is there, but you're not happy because you don't understand. There's no, as soon as someone says, yes, this is your name and you understand, just explain. This is not a D, this is a B. And this is this guy's signature. Oh, I'm happy I needed the money. So that's the thing of going to heaven. Going to heaven, a person gets to heaven as the whole thing up there is understanding, <clears throat> right? Understand. That's one of the reasons why people who do sins there's a few jokes about that, which are told. I don't know if I can. They're not so nice. But all right, I'll tell the joke. I'll tell the joke, right? A guy, there's a religious a Jew, a big rabbi, and he goes up to heaven. And there's his, his, his rabbi who passed away years ago, sitting up there. And they're all learning Torah. But there's this woman <clears throat> with a bikini, you know, a bathing suit, sitting in front of all of them, you know, search, making all these gestures and things like that. And nobody's paying attention to her. They're just all sitting and learning Torah. So he says, oh, Rabbi, I'm so happy. To tell me, what is this lady doing in, in your heaven? She says, oh, this is not my heaven. This is her hell. In other words, she's, her, the, <clears throat> she's up in heaven, but she doesn't appreciate it because all she wanted in life was for people to pay attention to her. And just she didn't get any attention to that for herself. But she's in heaven. 
She's in heaven, but she can't appreciate it because that's not what, you have to be a vessel for heaven. If a person in this life was interested in spiritual things, godly things, <clears throat> then he appreciates, he understands the pleasures in heaven. If in this world he was only interested in, in you know, physical things, eating ice cream or whatever it is, so he gets up to heaven, there's no ice cream up there, what's he going to do? Right. So it says that the souls get pleasure when they go to heaven. Says the Rebbe, this, that the souls get pleasure, it's infinite pleasure, tremendous pleasure. You can't imagine the infinite pleasure. And a person that really cares about God, that gets this level of masculine love of God, he doesn't care about heaven. He doesn't want it. He doesn't want anything for himself. Ian calls it, ain't a suggle, but nevertheless, this appreciation that he has for God, that we get for God in heaven, doesn't reach at all to this level of imcha to be with you, which is a second, it's just a secondary thing. This pleasure only is like with God. It's secondary to God. The low atomamish are not really you, God. If you really feel God, then you feel that your whole entire being is just this incredible gift. And you're not interested at all in getting any sort of reward or pleasure whatsoever. <clears throat> It's like if you save the life of some person that you really, you know, appreciate, you really like a big, a great rabbi, a great, who knows, musician or a great something. And you save the guy's life. He said, well, I'm willing to give you a reward. He says, the biggest reward you can give me is just a thanks. Just thank you. I saved your life. Yes, I really appreciate it. Sometimes you get that with people that are like, they used to have, I don't know, I guess there must be still also, they used to be like free uh, the, the, the lawyers. Lawyers that would take up a cause for somebody because they love justice. They just love justice. They don't care about getting paid. There's there's stories like that. Then there's doctors that are free. They used to be doctors. They would go down to Africa, whatever it is, and they would work down there for no, no money because they just love health. They want to make people healthy. They're not thinking about going to heaven or getting any rewards or whatever. That's the same thing. A, 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 a person that really appreciates God, he doesn't want any rewards. He's just, all he wants to do is be close to the source of life, which that's what he already is, right? Just to appreciate the truth. Because in the heavens, there's no thought that can possibly grasp you at all. But the highest of heavens, this is just like a little ray of God. Just like a little ray of godliness. That's what heaven is. And, you know, heaven is really great. You know, who doesn't want it? But if you really appreciate what reality is, then you won't care about it. It's like going to a doctor and saying, okay, I'll give you a $10 billion, but you'll never work again. Don't heal any more people. So if he's a true doctor, he'll say, listen, my friend, if I had the money, I would give you the money so I could heal people. To me, healing people is more important. It's the same exact thing with, I mean, what does he get from healing a person? What does he get from it? The fact that there's health in the world, that there's less sickness in the world, that there's health in the world, that's worth it. Then. The same thing is we should be with God. God is the source of health. He's the source of life. We don't care about any rewards. We don't want to go to heaven. All we're interested in is just health, truth, love, <clears throat> genuineness. That's what the essence of God is. That's, what, that's the whole speak goal. That's the whole goal of what Mashiach is. Okay. And so therefore, but if so, because the heavens are just a level of godliness. As I don't desire to be with you, God. I don't want to be with you, God. Ella Ahava Rabbi, I have a tremendous love, Hila Batel, to be negated in the infinite light of God. Like it says, to be united in the body of the king. Which is above any sort of spirituality or heavens or rays of God or whatever. And this is accomplished when we instigate. When we have a desire for God, we have a desire, then the answer that we get from God is this tremendous love. We feel it. Hagam, even though Shabbat is at this level, it's impossible to be. And like it says, Yoshvim and Nani Mizi Vashachina, even though that at this level of godliness, appreciating godliness, you're not getting anything. You're not being in heaven and getting pleasure from the rays of godliness. Adarab, exactly the opposite. At this level, we're talking about total surrender to God, but Metzios. Like the inclusion of a of a flame in a torch. 
Hagam, even though she tie ein ve efes, you'll be nothing whatsoever, but tibatel shum be metzius nagamri, but you'll totally be negated. Masha enkin, which is not the case of yoshvim v'nanim, that you sit in heaven and you get pleasure, and says atzmuto. Nevertheless, zeretzona, that's what he wants. The chetzo, the batel be mahusav atzmuso, milios nanim rak meziv a shechina, the getting pleasure from the rays of the shechina. <clears throat> this is a general thing in, in life. Like I said about a doctor that does be a doctor that he heals people because he loves <clears throat> healing people. So if he really, really loves healing people, then he doesn't he doesn't care about getting paid. And he doesn't even want to, anybody to know about it. Oh, such a wonderful person is this man. He does he doesn't care about being in the newspapers. He doesn't all he wants to know. If there's a place where there's sickness, he wants to make it up. So he gets nothing out of it. He, get, he get, doesn't get fame and he doesn't get money, but he gets the main thing, which is health. He's bringing health into the world. Now, you can't see health with your eyes. You can't see what is health. You can see people that they're healthy. <clears throat> That's what he wants to bring into the world. The same thing they had, they used to be the suffering artist we had. Oh, he wants to bring beauty into the world. He wants to express himself into the world. Let's say that that's what he wants. Nowadays, art is a little bit sort of making an effort to be ugly, but we're talking about a, genu a gen genuine the musician, right? All he wants to do is just make the music. He doesn't care about anything. He doesn't care about getting paid or whatever. After he finishes playing the music, he, he wants to get paid. He has to get paid. What can he do? But he's, so, he's, he's devoted to the principle. Okay, these things that I'm talking about, health and, and beauty and, and harmony, those are just aspects of godliness. That's something like the world to come. That's something like the world to come. That's just aspects of God. But the source of beauty and the source of harmony and the source of, <coughs> of health, right? That's the essence of God. That's infinitely above any sort of individuality you have whatsoever. And that's what it means. This love is called masculine. Come on, Milas of Zacharal in the cave, like the advantage of a man over a woman. Key, Nashim, because women, Datam Kalos, this is women, <coughs> they, they usually do not have the determination of a man. Which is not the case, the male, which he has usually the determination. Um, um, <coughs> women can be easily, how do you say, the, 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 distracted, let's say. Okay, th th that's in general. Of course, there are men that can be easily distracted from things. They're not bad. <laughs> and there's women that have a very powerful, right? Uh, they're, they're, how do you say, uh, goals. They can stick to their goals. and they can, this. Okay, but generally speaking, that's not the way it works. Generally speaking, generally, the mask aspect of man is that when he has a job, he does. Usually, men make better soldiers than women, and they make better sports than women. And people are willing to go and see men's sports, right? They'll pay more money to see women's sports because women's sports is not so much of a challenge, right? The, the opposing powers are not as strong. And so here you see guys that are really strong and that they really get. And there's somebody that stands against them. Oh, this is so male is usually stronger. Than female. Here we're talking about <clears throat> in the world. The male aspect is the godly aspect. The feminine aspect is the, is the Jewish aspect, the Jewish people. If the Jewish people, they begin, they have their desire and their longing for God, then the resultant arousal from above, the love that we uh, that's aroused inside of us, the inspiration is much, much stronger. But if the arousal begins from God, in other words, God starts the whole thing. Like, for instance, when God took the Jews out of Egypt, right? So the Jews didn't really want to leave Egypt. They just wanted to stop the problems. They would have stayed in Egypt. In fact, this is the four-fifths of the Jews. As soon as the problem stopped, right, there were all these plagues, and the Jewish people, and the Egyptians stopped making trouble for Jews. So it says four-fifths of the Jews remained in Egypt. They didn't want to leave. It says they died in the plague of, plague of darkness. They just didn't want to go out. <clears throat> it's the same thing when we receive when all, all of our connection to God is what we receive then it's a very weak type of a love you see this also commonly with what they call Bali Tshuva Bali Tshuva I mean I taught in a yeshiva Bali Tshuva for what 30-40 years so you can see this case a lot of times people Bali Tshuva was they, a person becomes religious he becomes religious and he's very super enthusiastic and then it wears off then it wears off Right. All of a sudden, he, especially if he gets married, he get this, then all of a sudden he goes back to regular life, and it, it wears off. That's called what's called a feminine love. 
it depends a lot on the surrounding. On the surrounding, it's not the the, the <clears throat> is constant. It's constant. Masculine love is he loves God. It doesn't care what happens. Like King David, King David, all of the Psalms. We, uh, we said in this Shabbat we say in Chabad all the Psalms, the whole book of Psalms. It's the last Shabbat of the month. We see that King David had so much trouble and so much difficulties, and through it all, he loved God unconditionally. <clears throat> That's what's called masculine love. It says, why? Where did he get this arousal to have masculine love? <clears throat> it says, first of all, love doesn't come from you. It comes from God. Right? But if, if you didn't start, you weren't the instigator, so the love that God gives you, that he inspires in you, is very weak. <clears throat> very weak. And therefore, it can go away. It can come and go. But the ideal love that we're supposed to have is like Abraham, like Yitzhak Yaakov, that we have a tremendous longing for God. And then <clears throat> that's the feminine. We begin. And after that, then God arouses us. That's what we see when the Jews left Egypt. So God did it all. So it was very weak as soon as they thought Moses wasn't going to be there. So they all worshiped the golden calf. <clears throat> Nowadays, by the way, in our generation, it's not going to be that way. All the Jewish people are going to really want God. They're going to really, all the Jewish people, without exception. That's one of the things the Rebbe is doing. That's why the Rebbe is the Mashiach, to arouse all the Jewish people to, to really want God. Bezeo, that's what it means, that love, this level of big love is called Dachar. It's called masculine. Shehu, Das, Chazak. This is a, 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 a strong attachment Shabucher Ha'ikar, that we choose the main thing and not the secondary. In other words, a love of God through all situations. <clears throat> Just take an example from Abraham or, or King David, right? These people. God made them so much trouble. A normal person would say, listen, who wants to worship a God like that? I get so much trouble. But Abraham, I say, Abraham and David said, I love you, God, unconditionally. I don't care what you do to me. I'm not the, the 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 yardstick over here, exactly the opposite. In a way, they were happy that God gave them such terrible challenges. I mean, they were terrible. They were mind wracking. They were not. They were crying out to God and pleading to God. But the fact of the matter is, they were. It was to God they were crying. <clears throat> they didn't say, "Forget it, God. You left me. I leave you." That's what's called feminine love. Masculine love is do what you want to God. I love you unconditionally. I'm not thinking about myself. That's what's called this love of God. Even though you don't feel yourself, you get nothing out of it. All you don't, you don't desire anything secondary. You don't want to go to heaven. You don't want any rewards. Even though the you'll <clears throat> that if you go to heaven, then you'll be yourself and you'll get pleasure, incredible pleasure, all these rewards that you get from doing being religious. Nevertheless, that going to heaven, you also get close to the source of life. Like it says, call us suring the Yisurim the Gehenom, Bishvil Lacey Lagan It says it's worthwhile all of the pains of hell in order to go to heaven. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, we talked about that before with Alicia Ben Avua. That after he died, it says smoke came up from his, his uh, grave. <coughs> and that the no, 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 after, after he died. He came to his pupil, I think it was Rabbi Mir, and said, listen, you got to help me. I'm, they won't let me up into heaven, and they won't let me go down to hell. They won't put me in hell, which I really deserve, because Alicia Ben Avua did a lot of sins. But he was a tremendous Talmud scholar. He was a tremendous, the, how do you say, <coughs> <coughs> tremendously connected to God, but he was also connected to himself. He says he, he, he became an apostate, he became whatever, but he says, I can't go, they won't put me down into hell because I have so much Torah and commandments that I did so much Torah, but they won't let me up into heaven because I did so many sins. Do me a favor, intercede for me that I'll go down to heaven, hell, and I'll get punished, wiped out, and they'll clean me out, and then I can go up to heaven. He says, one second, you sure you want to go to hell? Hell is like, you know, sitting on the dentist chair, multiply that by five million, the pain, without any, you know, anesthetic for you know, for a million years. That, that's the pain in hell. You want to go down there? He says, yes. It's worthwhile all the pain in hell in order just to go for one minute in heaven. So being in heaven is a good thing. It's the best thing, right? It says, no, a, a Jew, that's, that's called feminine love of God. 
masculine love of God is, even though that he knows how pleasurable heaven is. Nevertheless, heaven is just a level which is secondary to God. And it's not connected whatsoever to the, to the essence of what God is at all. Okay, so we're saying that's masculine love. How do you give birth to this masculine love? By longing for God. It says the feminine, the, fem, the Jewish people, if they long for God, then that gives to a, birth to a male. So if the woman, she gives seed first, the Jewish people, they long for God first. They make the arousal from below. Then the birth, the result is a male child, namely this male love we're talking about, this strong, powerful love of God. So if so, the question is, if a woman is barren, how can she give birth to a child at all? And none of this is going to give birth to a male child, right? The kibbutz bonel, her sons to her. How is that going to be? We'll find out, God willing, tomorrow. Because what we're talking about here is we're talking about <clears throat> the ultimate truth. This is the thing which is, it's not obtainable, not attainable by us, but it's something we have to try for. Because if we don't try for the ultimate truth, then we won't even get a secondary level. We won't we'll fall down. <clears throat> so the Rebbe is saying, <clears throat> pure love of God is available. We have to work for it. What if we can't work for it? What are we going to do? That's what the, this is going to tell us. It's going to give us advice. People like us that we're barren. We have no love of God, not from below, not from above, not nothing. We're, we're barren. How are we going to give birth to the masculine love? We'll see tomorrow, God willing. Now let's learn the Dvar Malchut. Now, 